want to get a picture with it. Nice. Hold it out for the picture. There, now you're also going to get a dehooking lesson. Nice. But there's actually the heart of the bunker because this is Menhaden Chum. We got two underwater lights here. And we got my dad and neighbor Brian fishing the front of the boat. I just caught a squid in my cast net. Here's my strobe light with a live squid on it. And there's all the his squid buddies coming through. You can see I just hooked it up right through the front. And he actually still swims perfectly. It's pretty cool. Now we got some better bait, some big goggle eyes. We reeled it up and this squid was attached to it and it was devouring it. Now on the fish finder you can see what the bait looks like when it's just sitting there. It's just all red. Alright, here's a bunch of different types of baits. These guys over here are ballyhoo. This one here is a pinfish. This is a hard-nosed jack or a blue runner. You can actually eat these. And these ones here are giant cigar minnows. All right, I'm gonna send down this ballyhoo on a knocker rig and see what's down on this wreck. Oh, a barracuda just got, let me get it. Barracuda just got dad's yellow tail snapper. Hopefully he doesn't get my ballyhoo. our chump slick right now. We just saw a spade fish in there. So whenever you're out here yellowtail snapper fishing, you got a bunch of fish in the chump slick, something really good to do is inside the chum bag itself, you actually have to sift through the chum, but there's actually the heart of the bunker, because this is Menhaden chum, and you put that on one of these little 164 ounce jigs, and you drift this down with really uh, really thin fluorocarbon line, anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds. And that's how you catch the yellowtail snapper. Catch rainbow runners and also the spadefish. These little sabiki rigs didn't work, so I put a little teeny piece of ballyhoo on every hook. See, I just chopped up a bunch of little ballyhoo. A piece on your jig, too. Well, I'm not trying to catch a big fish. And you just sort of let it sit there. And if you shake up the chum bag, then they're more likely to mistake your bait. But they're actually pretty smart. Now I shook up the chum bag, and once they all start going for a feeding frenzy, I'll sneak my bait in. But they're not really quite feeding yet. Now they are. Close enough. So now I'll sneak in one of my baits. Alright, I caught one of these guys on a zabiki. Caught this guy on a zabiki. And Pops just got a real big yellow tail. Let's go look at how big it is. Hold it out for the picture. Nice. Right, we're out here reef fishing. We got our chum bag in the water. And usually king mackerel, wahoo, and sierra mackerel will sort of swim the perimeter of your boat. So we got a float with some wire and a nice ballyhoo. We're gonna go ahead and toss this out. Bobber's sort of in the back of the chum slick and eventually this line will hopefully start screaming. I'm gonna show you how to fillet these ballyhoo whenever you're yellowtail snapper fishing or just fishing on the reef in general. You just take it and fillet it just like any other fish. like so, and you'll take this and you'll just cut it into little strips. This particular valley is not huge, so if you wanted to, you can make longer strips by cutting down this way. And then you can put a piece about this size on your yellow 164 ounce jig. All right, this is what your piece of ballyhoo looks like whenever you hook it up for those little those little strips that I showed you how to cut, you actually want to put it on the hook just like this. And then if there's a lot of current, you want to use this 164th ounce jig head 
or if there's just an average amount of current, that's what you want to use. This is actually a 1 16th ounce jig head. So if there's a lot of current, this would be a good size. And if there's no current at all, you want to go to really thin line and just use a hook without any weight on it at all. But usually if there's current, the fish are sitting a little bit further back, so they don't actually mind that there's a jig head on there. And that sort of puts it right where the rest of the chum is going. And on this setup here, we have the jig head, the bait, and this is actually just 10 pound line. And then it's just tied onto the braided line with a line to line connection with a double uni knot. All right, so for yellowtail snapper, this ballyhoo is a very common thing to use. If you don't have ballyhoo, you can just use a piece of squid. Shrimp is really good. If you don't have any of those, then you're gonna be digging through your chum and trying to find those fish hearts. Whenever you find a fish heart, the game that we always play is who can catch the most yellowtail snapper on one fish heart. So a lot of times you're catching undersized ones and you're trying to conserve bait. So it's actually fun to try and have people see how many fish they can catch on one fish heart. He caught it on the heart. He's 15. You don't measure these at the tail, you measure them to the whole thing. Yeah. This is a blue runner. Actually, it's a uh, hard-nosed jack, but in the Virgin Islands, people call them blue runners. You can't eat them. Huh? Dad just caught a spade fish. You can't, I'm not sure what the size limit is. Oh no, this is actually a... No, it's a spade fish. Cool. I think we should let him go. I thought we had to get him on shrimp. They sit in giant schools. Well, I'm not gonna eat them. Are you gonna eat them? No, yeah, we're gonna let them go, but pull them in. I wanna get a picture of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. He's fine. How about my new, my new D hooker? We'll give it a try. Cool. This thing hit really hard. This is Dad's third spade fish. I haven't even got one yet. They're actually really hard fighters. I think be really useful. What? Put that down, take the D hooker. I wanna get a picture with it. Nice. Goodbye. Alright, we're gonna see if a little eight foot neck can catch these guys. I'll wait till the valley who shows up. <laughs> the answer is no. That's a Dad that's a just got an amberjack. It is? That's another amberjack. And that's another amberjack. I was calling mutton. So we were just trying to get it up and we thought the other one was a shark coming to eat it. That's, a, that's another amberjack. Yeah. yeah it is. Nice, Pops. Hey. We're out here at night. Our depth is 100 feet. And we just see giant pods of bait. This was a pot of bait. This is all bait. This is all bait. And we see some big fish off the bottom. We're out here at night. We got our underwater boat lights out. Fish in the back. We haven't seen much come through yet. We got two underwater lights here. And we got my dad and neighbor Brian fishing the front of the boat. A giant pod of bait here. We got goggle eyes swimming through, a bunch of little fish. And it seems like it's eating all this plankton and krill in our lights. And you can see this is a giant pod of bait. And if you look at the finder, you can actually see it. This bait is just consistently staying with us. So you can see on the finder, and actually, Dad, we have quite a few fish down right at 80 feet. So if you reel it 20 feet off the bottom, and there's a big fish at 30 feet. All right, we're in the lights, and Brian just got us a great bait, goggle eye. Now we got some better bait, some big goggle eyes. We got two underwater lights, and we've been sitting out here for like an hour, and now we're finally starting to get a whole bunch of squid. All the stuff you see there coming through, that's actually squid, it's not fish. I didn't think we'd have this many squid in 80 feet of water, 100, but 100 feet. 100 feet of water. There's actually some pretty big squid. We're sitting on a shipwreck. And on this rod, I got a goggle eye sitting on the bottom. It's pretty big. I think it's a shark. 
Yeah, yeah that's a short. We got him on Ma now. You want, what do you want to do with him? Yeah, I'll just tire him out and gotta let him go. This is what I'm trying to get. It's a giant squid. squid. I don't know if they come around the other side, I'm gonna try and catch them. Alright, I'm trying to cast net some squid. I just caught a squid in my cast net. I was trying for him. Here's my strobe light with a live squid on it. And there's all the his squid buddies coming through. You can see I just hooked it up right through the front. And he actually still swims perfectly. It's pretty cool. There's a giant pod that keeps going. The only one I've caught so far was eating all the little fish in our black light. Alright, we're out here at night and I caught this value in a little hand net. It's not very big, but we reeled it up and this squid was attached to it and it was devouring it. It actually ate a good portion of this value. But now, it's going to be our bait. Dad just got his goggle eye stolen off the bottom. And we're watching this pod of minnows down there. It's just a giant pod of bait and it's just been sitting there for the past hour. Goggle eyes come through every once in a while. There one was. And it just comes busting through on the bait. Now on the fish finder you can see what the bait looks like when it's just sitting there. It's just all red. And it actually looks like down here at 80 we got stuff. This might actually just be all squid though. 